This is Guy Fawkes Central. Please, if someone is with me in here tonight, can you make a distinct noise? And he's supposed to haunt one of the upstairs rooms of the Guy Fawkes in here. Whoa. I felt this hand on my shoulder squeezing ever so tightly. Just literally on edge in this. If you've ever done the ghost walk of York, you will have probably walked past this building. This is the Guy Fawkes Inn. And with so many stories of paranormal activity going on between these walls, we just had to spend a night in here to see what we could capture when we stayed overnight at the Guy Fawkes Inn. In 1506, Guy Fawkes and three of his associates were executed in Westminster after a plot to assassinate King James by blowing up the Houses of Parliament was foiled. He was seen as a terrorist of the state, and the English people were encouraged to celebrate his death each year by lighting bonfires and effigies of the guy. Back in his hometown of York, celebrations are always more subdued. A city that still has a place in its heart for one of its very own. His image is still used to this day as a symbol of anti-establishment in politics. Guy's story started right here in an area of York known as Stonegate. To this day, this very building has built up such a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in York, so much so that it is always the final stop on the original ghost walk of York. So one of the most haunted buildings in York is the Guy Fawkes Inn. Now Guy Fawkes was one of our great heroes, a man who should be a saint. But well, he was born in a building at the back of that pub. He was baptised in the church over there, St Michael of Belfry. He went to school half a mile on the road at St Peter's. This is Guy Fawkes Central. And he's supposed to haunt one of the upstairs rooms of the Guy Fawkes Inn. The history of Stonegate is not 100% clear. Today, this is a hotel and pub, but before this, it has been a residential building. And while nobody can say exactly where Guy Fawkes was born, we do know that he was born in the year 1570 to Edith and Edward Fawkes, who were both registered as living right here. He was christened literally across the road, inside St Michael the Belfry Church, on April the 16th, 1570, meaning he would likely to have been born within three days of this date. His mother had given birth to a girl just two years previously, but she had died only a few weeks old. At the age of eight, Guy went through the trauma of seeing his father die, and his mother would later remarry to a Catholic man. A Catholic upbringing and education played a big role in Guy's later life. He would go and fight abroad for Catholic Spain against the Dutch. Although England wasn't involved in the war, they were still technically at war with Spain. He would next support a Catholic rebellion right here in England. In 1604, he started to plan his infamous gunpowder plot with some of his close associates. The plan to blow up Parliament and kill the Protestant King James, a plot that involved renting a room underneath the building and filling it with gunpowder to be ignited on November the 5th, when the King was present to give his speech. This plot almost came off. A security sweep of the building had missed the bowels of gunpowder previously, and only a tip-off led to it eventually being discovered. If it had been successful, then the course of history could have changed forever. Instead, they were foiled, later tortured, and executed. Guy cheated his execution of being hanged, drawn and quartered by leaping from the gallows to ensure that his neck snapped dying much quicker. But that has not stopped stories of Guy's ghost being reported in the very place where he grew up. So many years ago, some of the pupils at St Peter's decided to burn an old boy, an effigy of Guy Fawkes himself. Now, they threw him on the bonfire on November the 5th at that very same moment upstairs in the Guy Fawkes Inn. There was a fire, terrible fire. 
took hours to put it out. And when it had finally dissipated, they saw on the back wall of one of the rooms an imprint scorched into the walls of what looked like Guy Fawkes. And he's been haunting that room ever since. I've been doing ghost walks in this area for many, many years. And on a couple of occasions, I've been talking about Guy Fawkes, I've been stood near the pub, and as I've, as I've talked about this man's life, I've felt this hand on my shoulder, squeezing ever so tightly. And I believe that to be Guy Fawkes giving me a bit of a warning to make sure I get his story straight. One of the many things people talk about is children running around at night. Hotel staff often receive complaints from guests about allowing children to play on the stairs in the middle of the night. But there is often no children staying. It's reported on so many occasions that staff already know how to respond to these complaints. It is also claimed that two children did die in this building, both from cholera. Many mediums pick up on Anne, another supposed ghost of the inn who died here during childbirth complications. Could she be the grey lady that so many people have reported seeing here? Another ghost is said to be a priest who lived here during the 1700s. Staff have reported seeing a man in a large jacket in the bar and the staff areas of the pub, and poltergeist activity is also blamed on glasses that have smashed on the bar. I make my way up to the top floor of the building, the Belfry Suite, where the majority of paranormal experiences are reported. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel. So we are currently uh, in the Belfry Suite of the Guy Fawkes Inn. If you've ever done one of the York Ghost Tours, the Ghost Walks, this place always gets a mention. Said to be one of the most haunted places, if not the most haunted place. Certainly if you read the TripAdvisor reviews as well, I definitely encourage you while you're online, get onto TripAdvisor and read some of the things that people who've stayed in this very suite, this very building, have said about the place. There are so many people who've said that children have played on the stairs, children are running around at four o'clock in the morning. Well, there's no children in here at that time. It's only been paying customers. Um, people saying full body apparitions, standing over them in uh, early hours of the morning, waking up in their sleep. And that's where we are tonight. So I'm gonna give you a little run through of where we are um, in this Belfry suite here at the Guy Fawkes Inn. So we've just come uh, inside here and we've come up the small staircase into the suite. And I'm just gonna show you uh, this area, put the IR light on just so we can see. So there's little cushiony area here, little, it's like the Titanic chair isn't it, where, <laughs> where uh, Jack Draw Rose, one of those kind of old fashioned -y kind of chairs or beds that you can sit on. One thing I would like to point out about this place, original beams, probably had a, a lick of paint in uh, later years but everywhere you look in this in this place you'll see these are the original beams that came with this ancient building even there's even a curtain right in front of me here if you just look behind here i'm just going to put the camera there's a another secret staircase that goes somewhere and that's all locked up i do not know where that goes but fascinating I keep that covered by that cloth through here let's open this door and you've got to watch your step everywhere you go by the way 
otherwise you'll trip over this. So I'm now going into what is the sitting room, I'm just feeling my way in the dark. Um, I do this all the time because people watch our videos and they think when they see all this, they think I'm looking at a light, I've got a light on. Um, but I don't, I'm in complete darkness, this is night vision, infrared, so with the television and then you get sort of a nice suite there and another one just there and then if I can see where I'm going a little chair here behind it there's quite a big gap now I was up here earlier on tonight and I definitely thought I heard a, a sigh from a man sort of like a groan um, again you've got to watch your head low beams just like in the Pied Bull in Chester, I love these old places. And then you can see, it, just bang my head on something there. This is a little cosy seated area. So we'll probably start off in there. And I'm just going to show you through the other rooms in this in this place. So again gotta watch your step um, because this is obviously an old attic space but I'm gonna step over it and uh, this is a bathroom in here and here if I find where is the door handle here's this side is there anything to trip over so I feel my way in and straight away chair straight in front of me and that's the bed the old attic bed and desk here with some of our kit on and that's kind of it so I'm going to go into the sitting area and we're going to try asking out for some interaction as I make my way back through careful not to trip over anything and let's just go and take a seat I'm gonna, oh, let's trip over again I'm always going to do that and I think I'm going to sit over here whoa what was that hang on I need a light on seriously didn't bang my head on anything I literally walked in here and I heard a bang straight away and you can hear I'm hitting my head off it now off this I did not hit my head that's not the it's not that but I think I've just done that definitely heard a bang in here definitely heard a bang Definitely heard a bang. To the majority of you, this will sound like a normal knocking sound, but this really freaked me out as it seemed to be just centimetres from where I was. I think I'm gonna sit over here. Whoa. What was that? Over here. Whoa. What was that? The noise was 100% in this room. Just seconds before, I knocked on the ceiling and on this beam, and this is definitely not the same type of bang. I, think I would like to point out about this place, original beams. Everywhere you look in this, in this place, you'll see these are the original beams that came with this. Over here. Whoa. What was that? When this happens so close to where you're standing, it was much louder in my ear, but I'm glad it was still picked up on our microphones. Spirit, if that was you, if there's anyone in here who's able to communicate with me in here tonight. Put my phone away. I don't want any lights on in here. Or whatever made that noise it was not me and my heart is racing. I've just hit my fist against the roof it's definitely not me that made that noise it was not a I did not touch that roof even though it's a low ceiling 
something banged in this room. Is anybody in here? Can you do that noise again? It's almost too good to be true. I heard a sigh in this room earlier on tonight when I wasn't even recording. Coming from over there. What was that? And I know old buildings can creak and groan, but that was just a sudden thud. And I swear, I even showed you, I can't explain enough, I showed you with my hand. That was not me hitting that roof. Can any spirit in here please come forward and show yourself to me? a noise outside that we just heard. I might have heard a faint thud, might have been a car door or something just faintly outside. Can you make it knock? Now we often talk about where was Guy Fawkes actually born, where was he born? Many people believe, I'm just going to show you out this window, there's a legend that he was born. You can see there's a beer garden just down there. If I turn the IR light down you might see a bit better. No, nope. well, there is a beer garden and at the back there's an outbuilding. And general legend is that was where he was born but the truth is nobody actually knows for certain there's a, a legend that he was born near here was he actually born in this building we again it's impossible to know the truth um, but for many years historians have believed this is the approximate area where the man was was born, we know he was baptised just metres away, directly opposite this building in fact, and we know that he would have walked the streets of York, he certainly would have hung around maybe outside where the Minster is now, before heading down to London. Although he did spend a lot of time, we know, in Spain as well. What the hell was that? Noise is coming out from out here. Noise is coming from out here. Hello? Is anyone out here? Are you hearing that? Hello? Can you make that noise again for me, please? It could have been the heating. It's kind of like a, a very faint rattling noise. I do hope you've picked this up at home. I know these night vision cameras aren't the best for microphone quality. this radiator that's completely cold that's 
completely cold. It's not been on. What on earth is going on in this place? What on earth is going on in this place? Please, if someone is with me in here tonight, can you make a distinct noise? It's worth pointing out, I've got a sleep in here as well. <laughs> so I don't know what I want to happen. Look at that painting. I think these paintings in here are very creepy. I think it could be water going through some sort of pipe. If there was pipes. I don't think there is. I think it's just floorboards. Skirting boards rather. going down down here think we can debunk that. That could be that radiator, I think it is. But one thing I can't debunk is the noise I heard in in here. I just want to show you, for those that think that was me punching the ceiling, look. It's, it's not the same noise. literally on edge in this. It sounded like a beep as if someone was trying to open the, the door with a key card. I thought someone was trying to come in there. door so dark in here literally can't see where I'm going so any spirits in this room make a knock make a bang this is where I'm sleeping tonight I'll tell you what Let's get some toys out. Let's have this place fully, fully investigated. I'm using a thermal imaging camera. I believe that possibly some of the noises I've heard could be put down to some kind of heating system. Let's just have a little look around. I'm currently in the, the actual living room area. You can see there where there's been a radiator on. I'm just going to do a quick scan of this whole place. See if anything shows up on on a thermal imaging camera, anything that we think is paranormal. You can see the windows there. That's absolutely fine. There should be another radiator there. I think that's the radiator. 
it has been on. Is this it? No. What's that then? What is this? The floor. This is coming up as a heat signature. It's just wood. You can see my fingerprints on it. That's coming up warm. This is a pipe that runs through here. I don't know. I don't know. In the bedroom. I find this beam under the floor contains quite a large heat signature. Could this be a pipe, maybe of boiling hot water, from the heating system going through the building? I do not feel it's hot, I do not know what is causing this heat, but it's certainly something to consider when looking at the evidence. So we've been around here with the thermal imaging camera and we are picking up a few heat sources I don't think would be paranormal possibly indicates that there's some kind of heating pipes going through uh, parts of this attic space. Um, so we're going to set some equipment up right now um, and I'll show you pretty much what we're going to do. So I've got one of these cat balls. Um, you probably see your cat. It's very bright in the dark. You're probably not seeing that on IR but it's literally blinding me. Cats play with these they like to pour them and make the lights flash. Um, so I'm going to roll it across the room and wait for the lights to go out. The idea being if there's any children in here or anyone that can interact, they can move it. So watch it go. There it goes over, over there. And it's gone next to... Let me just focus in on that. I saw an orb. Something went across. I've got an EMF meter. For those that don't know what an EMF meter does, it detects electromagnetic energy. Um, basically, people believe that ghosts or spirits could be energy. And where did that ball go? Oh, it went literally right against the, the wooden timber. So I'll move that just so that it's uh, in the middle of the room. I didn't mean for it to go that far. There you go. You see how much it lights up. So that's going to go here. You can see by the rug. Let's do a test. So in theory, if anything can move that, that ball, you might see it on the infrared. It'll literally disco light this room because it's a very bright light inside that. And again, if anyone can come and touch that black, that dark grey box, light that up. That's an EMF meter. That's set up to detect any energy that flows through here. Spirit, can you move that ball that I just rolled across the room? Can you just move it a centimetre? doesn't have to be far, just enough to be able to trigger the lights that go off on it so that I can see that you're there. I believe we heard you bang before. I'm literally sat very quiet. I'm not moving, so I can't move any floorboards that could interact with that ball. Anything that can make it move, I'm trying to my best not to, to touch it. The 
so interesting earlier on we were just filming some daylight natural light shots of this place and first evening ghost groups uh, ghost walks rather arrived and all looked up at the windows here at the guy fox in hearing the stories of this place and uh yeah this is my room or my suite for tonight i've got to thank the guys for guys who work here that have allowed me to come and film in here tonight it's uh Much appreciated. It's really interesting as well that the people of York don't celebrate bonfire night like what we have. You know, around the country in the UK, um, we set off big bonfires and set fireworks off and we have huge firework displays and it all started from a celebration that the people from London did when Guy Fawkes was executed. And it was a, it was a celebration that they got him. They stopped the man from blowing up the Houses of Parliament. But even hundreds of years later, that kind of thing isn't celebrated anymore up in York. Anyway, they see him as a as a hero. He's he's one of their own. He's one of their one of their born and bred Yorkshiremen. If your name is Guy Fox. Can you move that small ball that's on the floor? Maybe you lived in here as a resident when this was a house. Maybe this was somewhere that you worked. Were you on this site before this building was even here? Were you one of the children? Tap sounds coming from over to my left. Ten o'clock. If you're here to play, I would love to play with that ball. The one that makes all the flashing lights. Send it this way. Have a go with it. Just move it. Do you like to scare people? The SB7 Spirit Box scans the white noise between radio frequencies to allow for spirits to communicate in EVP form. Okay, we're going to use the spirit box anyone that's never seen the channel before or knows uh, how these work it's basically white noise many people believe that anything that spirit can communicate through one of these so let's have a go with it see if we get any responses from this tonight is there anyone in here tonight that wishes to communicate with me two voices have come through What it's doing is it's scanning between radio frequencies and trying to pick up on any white noise that it can it can find. Can you state your name loud and clear? Did you die in here? Yes. Are you a female? Because I thought that sounded like a female. Yeah. 
Are you from York? Oh, that was a child. Anyone that says, let's just pick it up the radio. Find me a radio station at three in the morning that's got children on it. Let's have a wander through here. Voices coming through. Do you haunt this street? Why do you haunt this place? Surely you're not Guy Fawkes himself, are you? How did you die? You know, it's uh, really hard to pick up some of these voices, but they mean a lot of these are just interpretation of what you think it sounds like. Please be very clear, what is your name? It sounded like a woman. It sounded like a woman. Can you come and talk to me? Did you own this building? How do you feel that it is now a pub and a hotel? It is said a grey lady haunts this building, who died during childbirth. Is this her voice coming through the spirit box? I'm using an SLS camera, which stands for the Structured Light Sensor. The camera is scanning the environment and creating a 3D image using a built-in depth sensor and an infrared light to create thousands of dots, like a sonar. It is also programmed to detect human forms. Paranormal experts believe that this device can map entities that don't have a physical body. As I'm panning the SLS camera into the corridor close to where the EVPs were recorded, this stick figure was mapped by the SLS camera and then it quickly darts off. What is causing this and is this the person that we were hearing talking before? It could very well be pareidolia, it probably is, but next the SLS camera maps this face on a wall. Does it look familiar? We saw on the back wall of one of the rooms an imprint scorched into the walls of what looked like Guy Fawkes. I decide to use the SLS camera on the staircase where people have reported hearing children running around at night. I do not pick anything up and decide to go back up to the Belfry Suite. Okay, so it is 3.30, nearly between 3.30 and 4 in the morning and uh, I'm in bed. Ready to see if I can have a good night's sleep here in the Guy Fox Inn. Now, people have stayed here who have claimed to have been 
woken in the night by all kinds, so I'm going to see just what happens tonight. And I'm going to turn the camera around so that you can see I'm in bed. You've got this nice attic space. Yeah. Full of spiders. I saw a spider earlier really on. Huge spider. I had to go and kill it. Sorry if you're a fan of spiders. Is there any spirits in here joining me tonight? Make yourself known. I'm not going to lie, a few celebrities have stayed in this bed. Most recently, David Cameron, former Prime Minister of the UK. He stayed here not long ago. Obviously, he was attracted to this place because of its political, its political name, because of its political, its political name, because of its political, its political name. There's a motorbike or some car is about to go past. Can you make a bang on the head on the metal? Behind my head. The people claim that's gone off in the night. They've woken up covered in bruises. I'm gonna knock the light out and see if I can get some sleep in the Guy Fox in probably the most haunted room allegedly in the whole of York. York being of course the most haunted allegedly city in the whole of the UK. I love sleeping in haunted bedrooms, by the way. I fell asleep and had an undisturbed night with nothing to report. I've slept in hundreds of supposedly haunted places, so being able to fall asleep while potentially in the presence of a ghost is sadly something I do too easily. It's hard to say whether this suite is definitely haunted. I captured some unexplained sounds and a bang which I cannot explain. I've enjoyed my time in York, it's a fantastic place to come and visit and I encourage you to do the same too. But in the meantime, please like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel for lots more free content on there.